as everybody knows that the pandemic is a common threat and a common enemy on the whole world, including China and Pakistan. And ever since the outbreak of this pandemic, the leaders of both countries, of Pakistan and China, have been expressing sympathies to each other and providing assistance and support to each other. And at the high days of China's pandemic, and the leaders of Pakistan, His Excellency President Arif Arvi, and His Excellency Prime Minister Imran Khan, mobilized all the materials and resources to support China. And when the pandemic occurred in Pakistan, and the Chinese leaders, including His Excellency President Xi Jinping, Prime Minister Li Keqiang, and State Councillor and Foreign Minister Mr. Wang Yi, have been showing strong support to Pakistan. And we all say that a friend in need is the friend indeed. And ever since February 26, when Pakistan reported the first confirmed case of COVID-19, and government of China and the people has been providing assistance, support, in an emergency manner. Firstly, then we, China, we tried our best and we made a huge sacrifice and achieved preliminary win and victory over this pandemic. And we do learn enough valuable experiences so that the first thing we, we are doing is to try our best to introduce what we learned of how to combat this COVID-19 and to introduce the experience to our brothers and sisters in Pakistan. And the two governments organized video conferences and called upon of experts, doctors in various fields to come together to share this experience, to learn from each other and to get to the know-how of how to combat this virus. And secondly, ever since the outbreak of pandemic in Pakistan, the government and people in China has been mobilizing whatever resources and materials that we can get to provide support to Pakistan. So far, that nearly eight, 80, 800,000 face masks and more than 80,000 test kits and hundreds of thousands of protecting curses, forehead ceramics have been donated to Pakistan, including some, e some effective medicines, like Chinese traditional medicines. And besides the government, departments, and the civil society, and the non-government organizations across China are trying their best to come up with plans to support Pakistan. Among them, the most important one is the Alibaba Foundation and Jack Ma Foundation. And they mobilized special resources 
and made a huge donation of 500,000 face masks and 50, 52,000 taste kits to Pakistan. And these goods and donations has, have been already handed over to NDMA and this is building to the people you need. And certainly, we have dispatched experts team to Pakistan. And these experts are well known and, and some of them participated in fighting the COVID-19 back, back home in China. And they have enough and rich and valuable experiences of how to combat this pandemic. So now this team, the expert team now is in Pakistan and I've been carrying out, you know, exchange of experiences and they have been visiting NIH hospitals and practitioners, doctors, experts in Pakistan to exchange views, to exchange experiences of how to combat this pandemic. And according to the plan, and currently the delegation, the expert team is staying in Islamabad. And after that, they will travel to Lahore, the center of the current pandemic. And after that, they will travel to Sinti province and come to Karachi. And most probably, they will exchange views with the hospitals, the health, public health departments, and you know, the practitioners of relevant in Karachi to exchange views and to come up with plans of how to tackle this issue and how to deal with the issue. And Lastly, and not the least, and the government of China has pro providing four million US dollars of cash to support the federal government to set up an isolation center with cutting edge technologies and modern facilities. And this isolation center now is under construction. And we are looking forward, the construction work will be completed in the next few weeks and put into operation and use and to serve the Pakistan people. So everybody knows that since January this year, the outbreak of COVID-19 in Wuhan, the epicenter of China, government and the people of China have been trying our best and come up with a lot of strategies, policies to combat and fight this dangerous epidemic. And so far that, you know, the mainland China has realized zero new infections in the past 10 days and up to now the only increase and in existence of the cases are imported from other countries and this victory has realized with huge sacrifice and hard work by our government and the Chinese people, especially the people from the Wuhan, the epicenter. And of course, we gained enough experience to share with our colleagues, our sisters and brothers here in, in Pakistan. And the first experience is that the leadership and 
intervention of the government. You know, ever since the outbreak, His Excellency Xi Jinping, President of China, His Excellency Mr. Li Keqiang, the Prime Minister of China, and His Excellency Wang Yi, State Councillor and Foreign Minister of China, have been sending orders to the people and mobilize the whole country to come up with efforts, policies to fight this dangerous virus. And His Excellency our President Xi Jinping and His Excellency Li Keqiang, the Prime Minister, personally paid a visit to the epicenter, Wuhan, and sent guidance, orders to all the people across China to fight this dangerous virus. And with this leadership and intervention by the central government, all people across China mobilized and all sources accumulated to support the fight in the epicenter and across China. The second experience that we gained is the public awareness. This is a dangerous virus and so far there is no vaccine, no effective medicine. The only way is to isolate, to cut off the channels of transmission, of spread. But in order to do so, we have to call upon our citizens across China to come up together and join hands to fight this virus. And isolation is one, one thing, but at the same time, and the people has to, you know, stop public errands and they should not you know, go to attend mass, you know, gatherings and they have to stay at home for self-isolation. And we have a number of other, you know, very very good experience to guide the general public to avoid this virus by washing your hands for at least 12 seconds when you go out and secondly to put face masks when you go outside of your home and do not shake hands and do not use your hands to touch your eyes, your nose and your faces to avoid the con contraction of the virus. And these are the practical measures and the steps to avoid the virus. And in China after hard work and huge sacrifice, we came up with four early experiments. That is the early detection, the early report, the early isolation, and the early treatment. So the four earlies is very great experience we want to share with our colleagues here. And thirdly is the collective participation. To fight this virus needs the support of every citizen. China is one is a country with 1.4 billion population and to do so is not easy. But we did it. We come up with plans and call upon with every citizen to support the policies of isolation and 
the government made the decision to close down the whole city of Wuhan and the neighboring cities of Wuhan and also imposed semi quarantine in the mega cities like Beijing, Shanghai and Shenzhen. And these measures are very effective. And people are supporting, supporting us. And at the very beginning, in Wuhan, the epicenter, we have so many people infected with this virus. And there's long queues, and the patients cannot, could not enter into the hospital, could not receive proper treatment. Why? Because the facilities are not enough. So, with the order by the government, we set up two very big hospitals just within 10 days. And we mobilized more than 3,000 medical staff, medical workers across China. They were sent to the epicenter of Wuhan and to fight together with the local people and provided the basic medical services. And the situation improved much. And in order to, you know, when you shut down or lock down the whole city of 12 million people, and the logistic support is one big issue, big problem. In order to do so, and we have, you know, make sure that all these citizens in, in this city or other cities will receive basic food and basic services. So China mobilized all the mega companies and the service sectors to come up with plans and to provide whatever service are required by the people in the cities which are experiencing lockdowns. And I may say that this time that the mega, mega companies like Alibaba, Huawei, like, uh, you know, this uh, China Mobiles and all these mega companies, they donated more than 15 billion RMB to support the people in the epicenter. And the fourth experience is the International cooperation. International cooperation is uh, very important. Ever since the outbreak, government of China has been following an open, transparent, and responsible manner to deal with this outbreak, to deal with pandemic, and we share the information with WHO and the relevant departments of various countries, including US, EU, and these countries are concerned. And we started the joint research program to find a vaccine. And this work is going on. And the first test now is under operation. And certainly, we tried our best to cooperate with the pharmaceutical companies across the world to find the most effective medicine to cure this virus. So far, yes, we identify our experts and Doctors have identified few medicines which are effective and especially 
some medicines of traditional Chinese medicine is very effective. And within this, besides of sharing information, research, join the research, and join the work to find the vaccine. And China, under the leadership of our government and the supervision by the government, we have been carrying out international cooperations in the following aspects. Number one, that we are sharing with our experience of how to deal with this COVID-19 without any limitation. And so far, government of China has organized more than 20 video conferences with the major countries across the world and to share our experience with the experts, doctors, and the medical staff across the world about our experience, what we learned, and what we think is valuable to share with all the stakeholders. And secondly, we are providing equipment, medical equipment, to the most leading countries like Italy, Iran, Pakistan, Thailand, Philippines, Singapore, Myanmar, and even including countries like UK, United States. Because after China resumed our production and all the workers went back to the work units and the production has increased dramatically. Now we, we can satisfy the demands domestically but at the same time we can export some of the, this medical equipment and PPEs to other countries. And thirdly, we are sending medical teams to a number of countries. And these medical teams, these experts, they, they will exchange the Chinese experiences and provide consultations to the local doctors, local experts of how to fight this COVID-19. And this is the experience that we learned. And we, we are, you know, China is more than happy to share our experience with our Pakistan brothers and sisters. I may tell you that on March 28th, a medical team will be dispatched from China by the Chinese government to Pakistan. And this medical team, during their stay in Pakistan, they will visit Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi, and some other cities, and to discuss with the local experts and doctors and provide consultations and how to fight this COVID-19. I wish that with this joint effort that Pakistan will come up with excellent plans to tackle these issues. Pakistan is my second home. Before I came here, I stayed in your neighborhood, New Delhi, for five years. And I was happy to know that I'll be posted to work in Karachi, in my brotherly country, Pakistan. And in the past few interviews, I've already expressed my sincerity 
and dedication and commitment to work closely with the counterparts, the government, governments, and the people for the walks of life to further strengthen our bilateral relations. And that is our mission of the Consulate General's Office to carry out close collaboration in economy, trade, culture, education. And one of the most important purpose of our job is to provide basic services to our brothers and sisters in Pakistan and to further cement and promote these bilateral relations. And as everybody knows that China, Pakistan are island brothers and we always stand together in seek and seen despite the changes of world situation, the regional situation. And I always say that our problem is your problem and your problem is our problems. We work together and we can solve the issues and we can find solutions to tackle the difficulties and we are facing. And I make sure with you that during my tenure here, I'll try my best to work closely with the people and local governments to work together to make these relations an equal. And as you know that currently, and we are fighting the pandemic, the COVID-19, as I mentioned at the beginning, that this is a common threat and a common enemy of human beings. And it's very worrisome that the confirmed cases are on a very quick rise and many people are infected in the community. And I'd like to call up out here on my audience, that we have to observe and practice the social distance. Stay at home and keep isolation. And do not attend gatherings. While wash your hands, do not touch your eyes, nose, mouth. Keep everybody isolated. And by doing so, we can cut short the channels of transmission and the contractions of this deadly virus. And you see that according to the experience that so far we learned in China, that this pandemic is preventable, controllable, and treatable. And please don't, don't be panic. And if we take necessary measures to prevent and control, and we'll be safe. Therefore, I call upon everyone again and again. Please stay at home. Before we find a vaccine and effective medicines to cure this virus, the most effective way of control and prevent this virus, this pandemic, is practice isolation. Isolation is the only way to control this virus. So far, it is commendable that your federal and provincial governments have been taking strong measures to control this virus. And if everybody come up together and practice social distance, 
for time being and we'll see that we will win the spark eventually. And I may say that the short term isolation is hard, is very hard, very difficult. And the short term practice of social distance is also troublesome. It will cause some disturbance of supply chain, production chain, and value chains. But this is only sh short term hardship. Today's isolation, today's hardship is tomorrow's gathering, tomorrow's happiness. So I, I call upon everybody to practice isolation. Stay at home. This is the most important message. Finally, I will say that the Pakistan Daily Observer it, since it is establishment and this medium has, has been playing a very positive role to enhance exchanges among people to bring positive news advices to the readers I have been here more than three months and since arriving here, I've been keeping reading, viewing, and following Pakistan daily of them. And this is a great media. And I look upon all the readers who is read, watch this media. And I want to call upon the Pakistan Daily Observer to do something and to pro play a positive role, to be a channel, to be a platform, to make exchanges between Pakistan and China, and to publish more news from China, especially what the Chinese people are doing and to introduce the Chinese culture, Chinese education and the Chinese people to the Pakistan people while to bring more news regarding Pakistan to China. In this way, the Daily Pakistan Observer can be a very important platform of communication. So I wish you all the best and I have I'd like to extend my best greetings to the readers, to the audience of Daily Pakistan Observer. Please read this video, follow this video and we join hands and together to promote the bilateral, college, education, economic, and trade exchanges. Thank you. Thank you very much.